What's up guys, it's Jim with Awaken DCG, bringing you guys a sim gameplay video today. Today we're going to be playing Blue and Yellow Ace. This is 100% by far the leader I am looking the most forward to, coming in OP06 and in the EB01. Uh, this guy is just a ton of fun. I've already played uh, a lot of Blue, Yellow, Queen. Uh, this guy is not... Uh, like that deck at all honestly but I, I think the blue and yellow color combination uh it's just really fun uh just like um organizing stuff on your top deck and then uh combining it with yellows life uh manipulation and all this stuff is just a really fun combo and i think ace kind of cranks that up to 100 as you can kind of use his leader effect every single turn if you want to um just to go over the deck list real quick we have uh, a lot of these five drops um, with all of the brothers, Luffy, Ace, Sabo, uh, along with a couple 2Ks in the Satori and Suru, just so we avoid whiffs as much as possible. Um, running the Garp Searcher just so we can find all these guys, and not to mention, obviously, if we're running the big fives, we definitely have these small twos, as they are very, very good when you get them, uh, the five drops in life off of leader effect. Um, and you can do it really early in the game. I think out of the three brothers, Ace can actually do it the earliest um, out of any of them. Um, and then also we have a lot of 2Ks that just do a ton of great things in this deck. Um, Hiori basically converting your life into a heal. A lot of the stuff, like the brothers, are going to take that life. Hiori's going to actually just take it to your hand, which is basically a draw one. And then put a different trigger like one of these Thunderbolts or Sanji's Pilafs into it. Guaranteeing you get a great trigger on the next turn. Along with the uh, Flampe here. An addition in EB, which is really, really great in this deck. And I think most yellow decks from this point on. Um, basically converting it into a draw 2. Um, say you go first, uh, you can actually just do Donix 2, activate it. Say you get a Satorian life, play a Flampe, and now we get a draw 1 plus draw a 2k. So for 1 Don, we're drawing 2. Just a ton of really strong lines in this deck, and it's probably, no exaggeration, the most deck I, or the most fun I've ever had on a deck in this game. And I am really, really looking forward to playing this thing. So let's get into some gameplay so I can show you guys why this deck is so fun to play. And going into game one here, looks like we're gonna go up against a red and green law. Red and green law got a ton of buffs in EB and is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Um, looking at this hand right now, we only have one five drop, which is good. You want your five drops to start in your deck, and if you can, you want some uh, small brothers in your hand, as you really do not want to see those in your top decks. So we're gonna keep this. Uh, do not want to greed, because there are a lot of situations where we would get a lot worse of a hand than this. So definitely gonna keep this one. Um, got the Hiyori on our second turn, if we do not have any amazing plays. Or even just the Flampe if we would rather draw one and we don't have anything we would really want to put into life. So with two Dawn here, um, not anything to do, unfortunately. We could throw the Ace on the board, technically, to save Dawn for later. But usually I just don't think it's worth it. Um, Law could be running like Vista or something, and I really just don't want to deal with that. Um, so he's actually going to get Curly and Bonnie out early, um, knowing we don't have any removal, which is... Definitely true, we do not. Um, so we're actually gonna go two here. If we get an ace, we will definitely be playing this ace out. Anything else, we'll either be doing Flampe or Hiori, so let's look at top five. And there is the ace, just like that. And gonna put this brother on top, just in case we wanna draw him later. Gonna play this ace out. He will not have rush, but getting a 7k out for two, who, who would have guessed, is good. And now we get a swing nine. While we just developed a 7k in the same turn, and we are still at four life. Um, really, really strong turn for us there. And these puddings are actually gonna go crazy if he starts making this hand get bigger than five. At six right now, kinda gonna hope he's gonna keep it big, so we're gonna swing it to, into him again and then probably play a pudding and then just kinda ruin all of these cards that he drew. Good thing there, we got another draw out of him. And he whiffs again. Oh my god, this guy is... I would I would have left the game by now if I was him. I'm gonna draw the Tony Tony Chopper there. I'm um, gonna put two here, since we really do always just put two. And then see what we get. And then we basically flex on what we're gonna play here. So, 
with Flampe in hand, probably probably going to use the Flampe this turn and just swing big. So let's go ahead and grab Satori since I'd rather put Satori to hand. We'll put Luffy and Sabo to the top. This deck actually cycles through itself um, a few times, so it's definitely worth it to do that. Um, gonna swing at the Bonnie here. I think it's probably worth it. If he wants to give us Chopper, he can go ahead and do that. Um, we will just swing in and do it again. But he is smart there, and he will not be doing that. Um, I think this is a turn where we can play the Ace out. Um, or we can actually use it for counter for later. Probably would rather do that. Bit of a funny turn here, but we're just going to swing 10 and then probably play the Flampe. Um, Could have done that better, but there really was not a reason to actually swing more into the Bonnie. Obviously, I could have, but really just not worth it for me. Um, and now we're going to be at 7 right now. He has another Bonnie in hand, which is great for him. Going to draw the Cavendish. That card is an absolute menace, and we're probably going to see it on full display right now. He actually doesn't have a great board to swing into uh, Ace right now, uh, the character I mean. If he wants to swing into Leer, it shouldn't be too hard as he is going to do right now. Um, I think we're going to take this one to see what we get. We get Kid Sabo. And we actually haven't seen a Sabo in the top 5 yet. So the odds that this top 5 is another Sabo is actually really high. Um, so that is good. We're going to get rid of one of our puddings right now. We do not need two. And we actually have all of the brothers, so this should be basically a guaranteed brother. And that's definitely going to be the Sabo, and I think we're actually just going to KO the Cavendish. Um, probably going to be completely worth it there. So we'll go 7 to that Zoro. See what he gives us. If he does give us counter on hand here, um, that's actually pretty good for us. Because we're going to be clearing this board. And also taking cards out of hand at the same time, but he's going to play it smart. Uh, not do that there. We're going to play the Sabo out, and we're actually going to use the card action, trash our top life, and get rid of the Cavendish. We do not want that thing sticky on board. And let's go 9 to face here. If he does end up taking, we are going to play Pudding and bring him down to 5 cards in hand. Kind of screw his whole hand up here. And he is going to take, and this Pudding is going to be devastating getting him back down to five cards in hand, and they are a completely new random five, so those cards he searched out earlier are now not in his hand anymore. Always while you run the pudding, there's a ton of decks that like to keep their cards in hand. Law is probably one of the best examples, as he really does search out a ton of cards. Um, looking like he's going to swing a couple times into this ace. I think we'll save it once, and then see what he does after the fact. Because his best swing is leader right now. If he does have a Rush Zoro in hand, which he definitely could have drawn, uh, it might be a little bit annoying. Because he can go Rush Zoro into like 5 drop Law, reswing. Oh, he actually has a Machino to buff his Nami. Um, I don't think I want to give him every card in my hand right now, but if he does swing 6, I think we do want to give him another 2k. These uh, Surus are not going to be doing much. Um... So there is a world in which he actually can't play Zoro, now that I think about it. Um, well, he actually could if he decided to take one of these back with a Law Blocker. But do we think he has a Law Blocker is the question. And I really do want to put pressure on him next turn. There is a world where I actually get Ace in my top life, so I think we just give this to him. And then we can kind of just swing into board. He's actually going to play a Beige, yeah. And that's what Pudding does. It just completely destroys your hand. Uh, we're going to get a Sabo here, which is fine. We'll just be using the Hiori to get rid of it. Um, but let's swing a bit lethal into his board here. We'll go... If he counters out of this, he does not know what he's doing. So yeah, he's going <laughs> to accept that. Um, fine by us. Swing four into the Dadan. You know, I, I maybe could have gone lead, but you just kind of want to starve Law of Resources. That's really the way to deal with this deck. So we're going to do that as much as we can. And if he decides to give us a 2k or a blocker, I think that's actually better than him taking it. But yeah, he is not a bad player. He's going to accept that. And I think we're actually just going to end up playing a Luffy this turn. Um, he's actually going to 
probably make better use of this Sabo than Hiori would. So in that case, gonna go seven to lead and then follow it with a nine to lead. And we'll play Luffy who will allow us to draw one uh, and we'll just trash this Sabo, which is fine with us. Cause Hiori, um, you know, he, she technically could put uh, one of these Luffy's in life for next turn, but I really don't want to use Luffy next turn. I want to go for game next turn. So that is what we are thinking. He's actually going to give us the blocker, which is cool. We are completely fine with that. I'm going to go nine. If he wants to go down to zero, he can, which is really risky, but um, I am not going to stop you. So we're going to send that Sabo to trash and just turn it into a draw one. Just a ton of plays, a ton of cards in this deck that can make use of these cards that are going to be bottom decked at the end of your turn. Um, actually, they go to trash. Um, yeah, at end of turn, send all face up life cards to your trash. They do not go to the bottom of the deck. So he's going to have Brook into Nami. Um, that's definitely not the strongest uh, play here. And he's going to draw the one drop Tony Chopper, which is annoying. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to say it's very powerful. Um, we do have the Thunderbolt if we want to go for a game next turn which is definitely going to be a possibility. He's going to go 7k lead. We will 100% take that and we will be rewarded getting the Satori trigger. Another body for next turn is basically going to seal this guy's fate. Um, you're going to play that chopper blocker and I think his best turn here is going to be shambles into a law blocker, uh, take back Otama, play another blocker then maybe we could go for game, but even then I think we could, and he's actually gonna play another chopper blocker. Wow, that is actually insane. If I were him, I probably would've took Brook back and played it, just so you could have uh, more counter in hand, but hey, to each their own. We're gonna look at the top five here, and that is going to be a complete whiff. That is something that rarely happens in this deck. I think um, with the, we have 16, we have, I think, um, 18 five drops in this deck so i think the odds we whiff are like under 15 percent or so don't quote me on that i could definitely be wrong um, but we're definitely going to be going for game here so let's just swing seven with leader um he actually has two dawn up still so there's a world where he has multiple rad beams in hand and we can't finish him off i think that's probably why he kept brook on board because he's assuming he can live this turn but with Luffy and uh, multiple attackers and a Thunderbolt, I'm going to lean towards no. Um, so either he over counters with a Rad Beam right now, or he gives me two cards out of hand or a blocker, which is also fine. So I'm gonna go another one on Sabo, I think here. Demanding a Couple cards from hand, a Rad Beam, or a Blocker once again. If he gives me another Blocker, I'm going to have to go for Thunderbolt. And then just go for game. Um, in his mind, he probably thinks he can live this turn. But he does not know the power of this deck. Yeah, so we're going to Thunderbolt the Beige here. And then we have um, Guaranteed Lethal. We just have too many swings for three cards in hand to deal with. Unfortunately for him. So yeah, there's a 1k, um, we're going to go another 5k, take another card out of his hand. If this is a rad beam, that's going to be a severe over counter. It is a brook, and then we will go ahead and use Luffy effect. Attach four more. That is a 12k swing. Uh, there's no one card in the game that can beat that. So there's the rad beam, and that is going to be the game. And getting into game two here, looks like we're playing against a red and purple Luffy. I'm going to be honest, I have never played this matchup. Uh, so we do have two small brothers in hand. But we actually have five uh, big brothers in hand, which I don't like. I really don't. Um, so I'm actually going to mulligan this. And that is a lot better hand. So we have the Searcher Garp and we have three little brothers, which is exactly what you want to see in this deck. Because Garp can basically convert himself into another small brother. So that is going to be really good for us. I'm going to play the Nami. Um, probably going to search out, yeah, something like a Radical Beam. Very common search for this deck. 
And on our turn, we will definitely be playing a Garp. We do draw into 5-drop Ace, which is not great, but uh, we have two Luffy's Ace in hand, so we'll definitely grab the Sabo. We do see the two Sabos in the search here, but you always want to have three brothers. Uh, obviously, the Sabos are kind of a lower chance now, since we know there's only two more that we can actually find. But um, you just always want to have these options, if you can. Uh, he'll swing six. We will take with no trigger. We do find another five cost Luffy, which is uh, not good, not gonna lie, but we're just gonna use it for counter. Um, another one drop Garp, don't think we need it. Let's look for a brother. We get the Sabo exactly why we took it. And we will just use the Sabo and not use effect. Um, do not wanna go down too low in life, especially against um, Red Purple Luffy. That is definitely a big no-no. Gonna get rid of that Zoro and we will just pass back to him. Now a 7k leader. If he wants to play something on curve, um, he actually can't swing into us as 6k Luffy. Which is why uh, these early game brothers are so strong, developing these big bodies while making your leader unattackable. So if your opponent wants to play on curve, they usually can't attack into you. But he's actually going to attach one attack into us anyway. We'll get rid of this 5 cost Luffy. We do not need it right now. Maybe could have got rid of one of these small Luffys as we already have two of the big ones in trash. So the odds we're going to get to use both are a little low. But... um. They are definitely better to keep in hand than this 5-drop. It's definitely good sometimes, but it's definitely a pretty rare occasion. And he's going to leave 4 Dawn up, which 100% reads to me he wants to use the um, uh, words, uh, the event that ramps. But he's actually at 3 life still, so he can't use it yet. Um, so we actually get the ace here, which is great. So we are going to definitely be playing that um, and going to be taking it out off this ace. And then with the rest of our Dawn, probably just going to be swinging big. So we'll go six here. Just try to get a card out of his hand. We wanted to over counter if possible. And then he's going to want to use the plus 4k. So we are actually going to... I think we don't want to let him use it. Because if we do let him use it, um, he actually gets to ramp to five. Yeah, he actually gets to ramp to eight next turn, which we don't want. So we're actually just going to be a bit of a little shit, and we're going to search out probably the Luffy here. Uh, unfortunate. I wish we could have got another ace, but that is completely fine. And we're actually just going to pass. We do not want him to ramp. We want him to be stuck at seven, so he cannot get to that eight and uh, be uh, aggro on us. We could have swung ten and made him give us two cards, but I think it's better to keep him off his ramp. And yeah, he's gonna play Nami here. Grab that 2K, so we know he has a 2K in hand, which is fine. Again, if he wants to play anything big right now, um, he's gonna have to attach a bit of Dawn. He could swing at Sabo. That is not the best target in the world. Um, we'll definitely give him a 1K for that. We just want to have bodies on board to chip cards out of his hand if we can, since we know he really doesn't have the cards to chip cards out of our hand. Unfortunately, don't have a 2k for this, so uh, we are going to have to give him that. And we now are probably just going to go a little bit aggro. Let's hope we get a Luffy from this top 5. We actually don't. We actually don't get a 5 drop at all. So <laughs> that's pretty unfortunate. Um, but it does happen in this deck. Uh, you're bound to see situations like those. So we're just going to draw 2 here. And with another Luffy here, the odds we see one in top life are really low, unfortunately. So I think our optimal swings here are just 8 and... No, sorry. We can actually go, yeah, 8. We go 8-8. Eight, eight. I think 8-8 eight, eight's good. Or we can swing into the Zoro. But with 7 Dawn, uh, I guess he can't ramp into 10 drop Luffy next turn. But we don't want to deal with the Zoro, so we probably... No, we'll go 8-8 eight, eight at least. We just want to put on pressure. And if he counters out of this, he's either going to have to give us a whole rad beam or he's going to have to give us two cards out of hand, which he really doesn't want to do. We really want to put him in a situation where he's not safe and he cannot play his cards that he wants to. So yeah, he's actually going to give us a two and a one out of that. And then we will be going... Uh, nine here, but that's a perfect rad beam for him. So let's go ahead and swing at Zoro. So he'll have to give us two cards if you want to get out of that one. 
Not wanting to give this guy the perfect numbers if we can help it. Um, I think his best play this turn is going to be ramp one, play Whitebeard. So he has enough Dawn up for that Rad Beam. In that case, he's going to be able to swing eight at Ace. Which would be a little rough because, again, we don't have any 2Ks. Which is actually pretty bad. Um, but yeah, he's going to ramp that one. He's actually going to swing six. Uh, we'll take that going down to two, uh, which means this ace right here is actually online. And with 10 Dawn, is he going to play a 10 drop Luffy? I don't think that's correct. He actually is. Um, going to go really low. I don't think I agree with that. Yeah, I don't really like that play from him. But uh, I mean, more power to him. He's probably going to swing 8 here. It's going to be a little bit annoying to counter out of because, again, oh, he's actually going to swing at our ace. Interesting. Then maybe he'll swing 6. Yeah, and we'll give him a 2k. Uh, unfortunately, not getting a ton of brothers here. I think we put in here Disrupt His Hand for sure. Um, just a really, really strong card. We actually get an ace uh, that we can't do anything with because um, we do not have Baby Ace. Um, and there's actually no cards in hand that can make use of it, unfortunately. So, we're going to kind of get punished for that, which is fine, I guess. Uh, I guess we we, don't act, we actually don't have enough Dawn to play Luffy, unfortunately. So, um, we're going to go big swing here at lead and <laughs> call it a day. Definitely not our best turn ever. But trying to get him in a situation where he's really screwed in the future here. Um, unfortunately, we didn't actually have anything to make use of this Satori. But probably could have done the math better there. Uh, 10 drop Luffy on board right now. He's only at 5 Dawn, which is not good for him. We really, really do need an Ace. I really wish we had a Baby Ace uh, in hand right now. We've already used one, and I don't think we've seen the other one. So there's a possibility they are in these two life. But um, definitely not the highest chance of all time. So we're going to see there. Uh, this 12k is obviously going to be beating our head in every turn. Um, we're going to actually have to take this one as well. I do not want to get rid of every card in my hand. Finding none of our... Uh, 2Ks this game is pretty crazy and more Luffy's in life. Uh, the Garp draw there is actually fantastic. I'm going to bet that there's a baby ace in this top five. Um, there's not. Oh, there is. Okay. Yeah. That was a great gamble for me. Um, boom. Look at that top five and we completely whiff. That is not good. Um, yeah. Uh, I think we're dead next turn, ladies and gents. Uh, we really did not uh, show what this deck can do this game, unfortunately. Could play 5-drop Luffy. That's not really doing much for us. Um, so I think we kind of just have to hope by some stretch of the imagination he has no counter in hand, which I'm going to say he doesn't. So, yeah, he'll... Definitely counter out of that with the John Bart. Uh, unfortunately, we only have Luffy right now, so I guess we can go seven, and then I guess another seven with Ace, but realistically, there's no world in which we win this game, so we'll just play Luffy, draw one, I guess. Um, there's a Hiori, which we definitely wish we had earlier. But uh, yeah, we, he's just gonna swing fat this turn, and we are definitely cooked. No doubt about that. Um, 12k, yeah, that is GG. And next up here, we are going against Ace's best buddy, Yamato. Choosing to go first right now, we have three five drops in hand, not what you want to see. And now we have double peel off in hand. Oh, wow, this is a pretty, pretty rough hand, uh, not gonna lie. Um, good thing is, we have a couple 2k's. But I think if Yamato swings 8 right now, we're actually going to take. Because um, I just want more cards. I want better cards in hand. This is not what you want to see. 
Thunderbolt. Unfortunately, we get the Thunderbolt there, which is always bad when nothing's on board. So we have either the Sabo or the Luffy. Uh, I'm going to actually lean towards the Luffy right now. Um, definitely the better play, in my opinion. So we're actually going to get that out now and swing nine. Um, if this is an Okiku, uh, we can shake hands now because we are probably cooked if that is uh, something like that, but it is not. Fortunately, so if he wants to attach all five here, swing 10, it's going to be a pretty easy double 2k for us. One of the good things about this deck is Yamato kind of can't go too crazy because you can buff your leader like this um, and just make her attacks less threatening. And now if you want to play an actually decent body, uh, you actually can't swing at our leader. So pretty good for us. Only bad thing about uh, playing that Luffy there is we did see two Sabos in the top. So the odds that this Sabo is going to do us uh, much good are pretty low. Oh, I think we just desynced. Oh, that's not good. The hell? Why'd you do that? Yeah, that was an easy counter out. Um, this is actually a Nami. Let's hope that does not affect the game state. Attach two here. Looks like we've got a five drop Sabo, which is fantastic. And then we will probably be playing this small ace. Going to, yeah, swing big a few times this turn. And go absolutely ballistic. So we have a 7k swing. Uh, an 8k swing and a 9k swing. Uh, probably actually could have activated Luffy effect this turn just to go really crazy on his life, but um, I don't think it's worth it just yet. He will take the 7k. Let's see if he gets a trigger. Um, that is a Satori. Um, so another desync there, unfortunately. Another 8. Let's see if he decides to take. He does, going down to one. Now the nine, let's see if he decides to take this one. He does, going down to zero. Now on seven dawn, he can definitely play 40 Jones, but that does not win you the game. I'm a 7K leader right now, and there's really no situations where you're winning this, I don't think. Yeah, you can't do that. You're gonna need to attach two dawn to that guy. So, yeah, definitely in a rough spot for him. He's pretty much dead next turn. Um, no blockers up. I don't know if Yamato runs blockers. Well, if he has this desyncing, then he probably has this in his deck. But um, I, that's probably one of the only things that can actually save him. Uh, going to contemplate what to do here. I'm going to be honest. I think uh, there's not much you can do. Swing a board, I guess, is your best play. Uh, I'm a 7k, sir. That does not work. Uh... <laughs> yeah, he's going to forfeit. <laughs> All right. Great last game. And that is going to be the video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Um, definitely a fun three games. Uh, I feel like I made a couple misplays in the second game there. Maybe could have squeaked it out. But definitely was not seeing the uh, the best top fives we could have seen. Um, not too many brothers combos and stuff like that. But I'm sure you guys can see the power of this deck. Uh, there's a ton of lines you can do. Um, whether it's playing these Flampes or Hiori's to get these things into life. Or just getting the brothers really out really early. Buffing your leader and developing a big body. This deck is really, really fun. Um... It definitely gets outpaced by some uh, some decks in the meta. I think it's good against Yamato, actually, which I think we displayed pretty well here. Um, but against black decks, uh, you're only really developing one decent body per turn. So it might not be as good as you think it would be, uh, even though you are swinging big at life usually every turn. But uh, definitely a extremely fun deck, guys. If you are looking forward to ST13, please let me know down in the comments. Because I know Black, uh, Luffy, and the Red Sabo Leader are both very fun as well. And I'm probably going to try them out for sure. But this guy is probably going to be my main the second he comes out. So going to be looking for that Alt Art Leader. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm out. Peace.